Okay, so I'm sure more students will be joining us as we go. But I just want to start. Um, thank you all participants for coming. Thank you all panelists for being available in this format in these trying times. So the format of this event is going to be, the first part is going to be introductions and a brief overview of the colleges from each of the panelists. Following this, that part, we're going to move to a question and answer portion. So you can put your questions in the Q&A box that's on the bottom right hand side of the screen. So you should see it. And if you are an attendee, you should be able to type questions into that box. And that's where you can put any questions you have to specific schools or just overall. Um, and I'll remind you of that periodically as we go through our event. Another thing is I'm gonna drop a Google form into the bottom of the chat. Please fill out this Google form so that we can let colleges know a little bit more about who you are and you know what interests you about the colleges in this session. So without further ado, um, Kelby, do you want to start? Sure. Um, so I'm just doing my just intro who I am and then next person, correct? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, so my name is Kelby Sarti and I am the assistant director here at Point Loma Nazarene University and we're located in San Diego. And whoever wants to introduce themselves next can introduce themselves next. Hi everyone, my name is Casey Shubin. I am the campus visit coordinator here at Whittier College and we are located in Whittier, California. Hi. Hi everyone. Oh, go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Sherry Chillingworth. Um, I am with Otis College of Art and Design and we are located in Los Angeles. Hey everybody, AJ Williams of Santa Clara University. Uh, I am the, the counselor for your territory, so I'll be the one who read your application. Go next, I'm Chelsea Decker. I'm with Soak University of America, and we are in Orange County, California. Hi, I'm Denise Sheldon. I'm actually the head women's volleyball coach at Menlo College um, in Silicon Valley, um, and I'm also the admissions counselor for um, transfers in Southern California. Hello everyone, my name is Joy Rubio. I'm an admission counselor for Fresno Pacific University, a private Christian college located in Fresno, California, which is right in Central California. So thank you for having me. Well, I thought we'd go in order, but I'll go ahead and speak up. There's that silence there that says okay too. My name is Beth Bowles. I'm from Mount San Jacinto Community College. We have four campuses, uh, but we serve this district, so we're really happy to be here. Thank you. Great. And at that point, I think we've introduced everyone. Please let me know if I missed you by any chance. So we're going to start our presentations. Um, what are your colleges who we're going to start with? Great, let me start sharing my screen. And I hope everyone can see that okay. Awesome, so hello everybody, my name is Casey, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the campus visit coordinator here at Whittier College. So to let you know who we are, we are a four-year liberal arts institution located in between downtown Los Angeles and downtown Disney. We currently have about 1,700 students, which really allow for small class sizes, the benefit of personalized learning and hands-on experience. With an average class size of about 19 students, this means that our students are really having many opportunities to receive one-on-one -on -one attention and access to their professors. Our faculty and staff work really hard making sure students don't fall between the cracks and providing them with the individual attention that they deserve. We have about 30 majors and 40 minors, including the option to even design your own major through our very own Whittier Scholars Program. Some of our other more popular majors um, are listed here in the bold, but they do include art, biology, business administration, English, kinesiology, and psychology. 
We do understand that many of you have a variety of passions and interests, um, and we definitely want you to explore them. Because of that, our students are not required to select a major until the end of their sophomore year. However, if you know exactly what you want to study, you're more than welcome to declare upon your arrival. Uh, our community and student life here at Whittier is very active and involved with over 70 student organizations to take part in. Whittier also offers 10 societies, which are very similar and characteristic to fraternities and sororities. Our students are also active in the community as well, working with our Center for Engagement with communities. Um, they are able to connect with community partners that work with students in our local school districts. Athletics also plays a large part our campus. Uh, we are an NCAA Division III school, which means that we take sports seriously, but our number one priority is always academics. The goal here is to really be a true scholar athlete um, our men's water polo team just won our Division Three National Championship last year, um, and several of our other teams received all academic recognition. So students who are serious about competing um, and can still make their academics a priority. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, there's definitely a place for you here. Uh, in addition, you will receive help with resume building, networking, job search, access to our graduates are working, continuing their education, serving in the military, or volunteering. It is our hope that by receiving a liberal arts education, it will prepare you to be a lifelong learner, effective problem solver, and innovator in your field. So regardless of the field of study or industry that you get into, the skills that you develop here at Whittier will help equip you to be a successful individual. And lastly, we have decided to eliminate our $50 application fee this year in the hope that any student who wants to apply can have that opportunity without any additional barriers. So with that, uh, we hope to welcome you to the Poet family soon, and I look forward to your questions. Great, thank you so much. So now we're going to hear from Soka University. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chelsea, and again, I'm with the admissions office at Soka University. Um, Soka is not an acronym, it's actually a Japanese word <laughs> that means to create value. So our full name is Soka University of America, not to be confused with our sister school, Soka University of Japan, and Hachioji Tokyo. So if you're Googling, you're like a little bit confused, we're in the United States. Uh, we're a private nonprofit liberal arts college in Orange County. Um, this is a picture of our campus. Just over this hill is Laguna Beach. So we're about three miles inland of the ocean. And in front of campus is suburbia. So Trader Joe's, Costco, all of that's a mile away, even though sometimes it looks like we're out in the middle of nowhere. Some key facts about SOCA. Uh, we have 450 students total. So we're a very, very small school. You'll know everyone by name. 40% um, of our students are international. We're actually the most you know, ethnically diverse liberal arts school in the nation because of this, coming from over 30 different countries. We're a fully residential campus, so students live on campus all four years. We offer our singular major, the BA in liberal arts. It's fully WASC accredited. We have five concentrations where students can focus in, a study abroad requirement, um, seven to one student to faculty ratio, and an average class size of 12. Our classes are taught in discussion dialogue-based learning environment. Um, built around the Socratic style. NAI athletics, which I'll talk a little bit about later, and then we offer very generous uh, merit and need-based financial aid. We're very proud we're ranked um, number six this year for best value in the nation for liberal arts schools. Okay, the whole reason SOCA exists is our mission. It was given to us by our founder to foster a steady stream of global citizens committed to living a contributive life. SOCA is non-sectarian, but we're, we're proudly founded on the principles, the Buddhist principles of peace, human rights, and the sanctity of life. So we're really encouraging students to contribute toward their communities and use their education that way. Academics, we focus on Eastern and Western thought. This is the map in the center of Founders Hall. It looks a little bit different than most um, maps people are used to because we focus on the Pacific Basin as opposed to um, you know, the Western Hemisphere. We have some SOCA specific programs, and I'm going to highlight three of them. We have five concentrations. This is where students dive deeply into their interests, 
Um, they're all taught in an interdisciplinary lens across environmental studies, humanities, international studies, life sciences, including our pre-health track, and social behavioral sciences. Our language and culture program, all students will have to take a non-native language of Chinese, French, Japanese, or Spanish. And then for half of their junior year, we enroll them in university in another country that speaks that language. It's completely built into tuition, so there's no extra cost. And for any um, of our students who are undocumented, we have a domestic alternative, so they can still come and have a SOCA experience, which is really valuable. We also have a learning cluster program in our interterm between fall and um, spring semester, where students go out and conduct um, hands-on learning. So this picture is from a group that went to um, Sweden and Denmark this last winter to um, study outdoor education in a hands-on way. Residential life, here's a map of one of our first year halls. You're in a double. Always it's only you and your roommate sharing a bathroom. We really wanted it to be very comfortable for our students. Um, we have other some great amenities, multi-purpose rooms, community kitchen. SOCA students come from lots of different economic backgrounds, so we try to limit out-of-pocket costs. So laundry is free, parking is free, to use the gym is free. Um, you get to control your own AC. There's no utilities in addition once you cover your room and board. And that, here's some sample posters of programs that were put on. Um, SOCA's Residential Life really focuses on community building, um, diversity and inclusion and identity, as well as life skills. We have student life and leadership, lots of different clubs, bridges to business program, um, a strong focus on heritage celebrations, especially with so many international students, athletic hubs, um, alternative spring break. Our NAIA teams with the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, arts soccer, cross country, track and field, swimming and women's golf. We also will take students who can walk on. Um, our admission process is pretty straightforward. It, our early action deadline is November 1st. It's non-binding. Our regular decision is January 15th. Um, this year we are test optional. It's a major change. For financial aid, our tuition is about 32,000 and our room and board is 13,000. We offer a the SOAK Opportunity Grant for families who earn under 60,000. We cover the full cost of tuition. So it's the way that we can really help all income levels come to SOCA. And then we offer merit scholarships that are, re that are renewed all four years up to um, the $15,000. So thank you very much. And then here's our team. If you have any questions, I look forward to answering them later. Thanks. All righty. Oh, you already started. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, AJ Williams here with Santa Clara University. And my email is now in the chat there. Um, been at the university for a long time. Uh, I oversee our transfer process and athletic recruitment. Uh, however, we're Division One, so the coaches handle the recruiting. If you're reaching out to me, probably not a good chance you're going to be playing. But uh, anywho, <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and I'll, let me share my screen. Uh, let's see. Alrighty. And so first things first, I think that's a good, um, you know, shot to start with. Santa Clara is a beautiful campus. Uh, we are the oldest institution of higher learning in the state of California, but you would have no clue. It is a really, uh, you know, beautiful kind of state of the art um, uh, facilities and, and all of that. If there's any campus in Northern California that kind of has that Southern California vibe, to, vibrancy to it, uh, in my opinion, you know, I think it's us. And so uh, a nice place to be for a few years. Uh, we are, if you're not familiar, we are in uh, the California, you know, Northern California, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, Silicon Valley. That is our backyard. That's our playground. Um, but again, being the oldest school in California, we were here before the Valley was known for technology and engineering and all of that. Uh, that said, as a university, those are the areas that we are, are, are known for nationally, right? Uh, engineering, business, law at the graduate level. Um, I think we're lucky to be physically located where we are because you can literally get to anything within a couple of minutes. I live downtown San Jose. I could ride my bike to work if I wanted to. I haven't wanted to in over a decade, but you, you get the point. Um, if you're driving, San Francisco is about a 45, 50 minute trip up the 280 or the 101. Uh, literally across the street from the main entrance of campus is a Caltrain station. You can hop on a train and be up to the city in a little over an hour. Oakland is 40 minutes in the other direction. Our closest beach is Santa Cruz. That's about 30, 40 minutes to the south of us. San Jose International, uh, literally uh, two miles from the campus. And so again, you can get to anything within a couple of minutes. 
um, being, you know, that, you know, being in the Bay Area, one of the more diverse and mingling areas of the country, just like Southern California and parts of the East Coast, as a university, we try to reflect that. And so we're definitely a national school. As you can see, about half the students come from California. I think South Dakota is the only state that's not represented in you know, 38 countries there. Um, while we're known for business and engineering, all of our students have access to internships, uh, job placement, research, that kind of thing, as evidenced by that 80% um, percentage right there in terms of our students who graduate with internships under their belt. So again, that's across the gamut from art history to business engineering. You know, all of our students have opportunity. Um, your parents will probably know, you know, the Bay Area is one of the more expensive areas in the country to live. You have to be productive where we are. Our graduates in the top 1% of salaries at graduation and throughout their career. Uh, the type of school that we are, we are, we are a Jesuit Catholic institution. Um, one of the 27 Jesuit schools to choose from in this country alone, about 180 worldwide. What I appreciate about that approach is that it is hands down, in my experience, the most open-minded approach, uh, or one of the most open-minded approaches that you will find in, in, in higher ed, and that the Jesuits uh, are known for valuing education, social justice, doing for others, that kind of thing. The only requirements during your four years at Santa Clara are three classes in theology. There are literally 152 different classes you can choose from that will fulfill those three class requirements. And so what I appreciate about it as someone who is not religious as in church going, but I've worked at the university for 14, going on 15 years, um, again, it's no area, area where anybody's saying, we know the answer for all of this dogma, um, and I can respect that. But given that uh, they value social justice and doing for others, that kind of thing, study abroad is hugely popular. Uh, our participation rates in terms of our students will range anywhere from 30% some years to about 20 or 25%. Uh, again, how you can help folks out there in the world if you haven't kind of spent some time in their environs and things like that. In terms of the type of school that we are, we are a medium-sized school. And so big picture, you know, when you guys are looking at four-year institutions in this country, there's about, you know, 2,000, 2000 plus uh, of those options. And really they fall into one of three categories to me. You know, they're either, you know, traditional liberal arts colleges, some of your smaller schools, uh, your sort of big state uh, research schools, mostly public institutions, which are in that, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 on up thousands uh, of range, or they're a medium-sized school. And so we are definitely, we fall in that range. To me, medium is anywhere from five to about 20,000 students. We're 5,500 undergraduate students, 3,100 graduate students, um, but we're limited with our grad offerings and the undergraduate experience is undergrad-centric in that every class is taught by a professor, uh, you see our student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1, average class size 23. I graduated from the University of Puget Sound, which is up in Washington, a traditional liberal arts college. Those are the exact same ratios I dealt with there. And so over a medium-sized school, academic, it's a smaller environment. We're in the quarter system, so things move quickly. I think the size and the speed of things play into the fact that we have one of the higher retention rates in the country, meaning continuation for first and second year, one higher four-year, not six-year, but four-year graduation rates in the country at 88%. Uh, in terms of applying, you apply directly to one of our three schools. Uh, again, while we're known for business and engineering, the majority of our students, about 60% of our students, are in the College of Arts and Sciences. And so uh, whatever school you're admitted into, you're in that program for at least your first year. Business students and engineers get into that kind of coursework right off the bat, as well as taking courses in arts and sciences, because that's where your general ed is primarily co uh, housed. So it's easier to be in one of those smaller divisions, although it's tougher to get in. Um, on the front end, it's easier to be there and work with arts and sciences for a second major or minor. Uh, if you're in arts and sciences, you can have access to engineering or business minors. Uh, we're a Common App school, and so the Common App says you're applying to Santa Clara University. The supplement is where you would designate a school. Um, Santa Clara, it's a private school, it's a big price tag. Total cost of attendance for one year is about $76,000. And uh, yeah, you, you didn't, I didn't study there. It's a big price tag, uh, you know, up there with some of the more pricier uh, institutions in the country. That said, you know, applicants are automatically considered for any merit-based or uh, monies or academic scholarships that they might qualify for. We are test optional for the next couple of years. And what I mean by that is that test will have no bearing on whether or not you are considered for admission or merit. So I hope that's clear. In terms of need-based funding, two very important forms to fill out, the FAFSA, the CSS profile, apply, see if you get in, if what we offer is realistic, and go from there. Feel free to send me any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I'm sure we're all wondering, do you have a dog? <laughs> oh, you're muted. Got to unmute yourself. Yeah, my, my neighbor has one and then mine is pretty quiet, but yeah, we got, we have one. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love to see it. Okay, without further ado, we're going to hear from Point Loma Nazarene University.
Hey everyone, uh, my name is Kelby Sarti again. Uh, you will definitely hear my daughter somewhere on the way. It's just me and her today, so she'll be screaming in a couple seconds. But uh, let me start my timer so I don't go over. So this is Point Loma Nazarene University. We're located in San Diego, and this is an actual picture. It's not fake, cropped. Uh, we're built on 93 acres of beachfront property, so not too shabby. Uh, this is a basically overview. We only have 2,700 students max on our campus. So you, your high school might be larger than this, or maybe a little bit smaller. You can see 14 to uh, 1 is a student professor um, ratio. And for your average class size, you'll probably run in around 23 students. As you get into your core classes, you will go, you will go anywhere from six to 12 students. Depending on the major, you may have a class of one or two students, which is always a little frightening because if you didn't do your homework or didn't uh, you know, read your, the chapter, they're gonna know because it's just you in there. Um, and I, all of our professors have the highest degree within their major. We don't have uh, subs or TAs teaching the class. I always like to say we're not uh, charging you TA or sub prices. So because of that, you know, they don't teach the classes. We are a liberal arts university and we offer over 60 different areas of study. Uh, so here you'll see uh, just a couple highlights of the majors that we are most known for. I'd probably say within our top five would be business, communication, education, psychology, and anything within our sciences. Again, you can see that we have a 90% entry level medical school. Uh, within accounting, uh, our CPA, which is under business, our CPA students are passing all three sections of their CPA exam at a rate of 65%. You may think 65% isn't all that good, but the national average is only 14%. And of the students that are graduating within uh, uh, four years, 91% are doing so. And about for the last 19 years, we've had a pass rate um, for the NCLEX uh, of, of around 90%. So one thing I do want to point out here is that 98% of our majors require you to take internships. We don't do that to be mean. We just want to make sure that you have a full understanding of what you're getting yourself into before you get there. And also oftentimes uh, many students have a kind of a, a narrow pathway of what they think their major can offer them when we're in reality, uh, their major can kind of overflow to different industries and different areas. So you can see the things that we offer, uh, resume building, mock interviews. The mock interviews I usually say are pretty uh, intense because they are critiquing you as you are doing an interview based on your department. So if you have a weak, a weak handshake, they'll let you know afterwards. If uh, you have poor eye contact, uh, for myself, we had to do this as well. I'm part Italian, so I move my hands a lot. They're like, it was really distracting. So they taught me breathing techniques and just what to do with your hands. So little simple things to kind of polish yourself up before you have to worry about, uh, you know, searching for a job. Uh, so these are things that will help you do. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, we are a private Christian university. You don't specifically have to be Christian to attend Point Loma. Uh, we have a living agreement. So that basically is a conduct code. We are a dry campus. Uh, we do have over 40 different denominations on our campus. We do ask all students to take at least three religion courses within four years. And um, we do ask you to attend chapel. We have four chapels offered a week, freshman and sophomore. We ask you to do it twice a week, juniors and seniors once a week. And uh, every chapel is a little different, so you get to pick and choose what sounds interesting to you. We do have over 60 different clubs and organizations to help you get connected with. Um, so I'll let you read those there. But we do have, uh, for those of you who didn't know, our mascot is the sea lion. We used to be this kind of lion, but now we're this kind. So uh, our colors are green and gold. We are NCAA Division II, so you can get full, full half or anything in between when it comes to scholarships. And we also do have a surf team, so if any of you guys are interested in learning how to surf, you can join the club. And uh, you can live on campus all four years, 67% um, of our students do. Uh, think, about, think about it as about $1,000 a month, root, food, utilities, everything, parking's free, same thing with washer and dryer, which is great. I used to fight for quarters all the time. Now you don't have to do that. All right, and, I'll, and that's the price. So we're not the most expensive, we're not the cheapest, but 91% of our students are there with some sort of aid. And you can apply to us through the Common App or directly on our own, own application. November 15th is your early action deadline. We're non-binding and we're also um, going test optional for this year. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me afterwards. Thank you guys.
There we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Sherry Chillingworth. I'm with Otis College of Art and Design. Um, I'm an admissions counselor here. And also, if you would like to receive some additional information um, with uh, about Otis or a view book, you can go ahead and scan this QR code and we'll get that out to you right away. A couple of things you might not know is we are the oldest professional art college located in Los Angeles. Oops. So location, as you can see here, Otis is located in the foreground of this slide. We're about a mile and a half from the beach, not too far from um, nature. Uh, if you wanna study art and design, you wanna make sure you have access to visual culture. For that reason, we have over 200 museums, galleries um, located in Los Angeles. Um, and there are a lot of creative communities as well. Um, we are uh, a very diverse area, as you know, um, but I do want to do want to also point out the fact that there are over 800,000 jobs in the creative economy located in Los Angeles alone. So if you do want to study art and design, make sure you have access to visual culture. Loyola Marymount University is about a mile up the street, as you can see here on this slide, and um, we are doing cross, cross registration with them now. Our community is just a little under 11, 1100 undergrad, um, and we have 400 professional faculty all working in the industry in which they are teaching. And as you can see here, we are a very diverse um, community as well. If you'd like to take a virtual tour, um, at least until you can get on campus, I definitely recommend getting onto campus as soon as possible. But until then, um, please take this virtual tour. Uh, it is led by two student ambassadors that are current students at Otis, so you can ask them any questions about, about, the, um, about the campus, about their classes, um, super friendly, um, great way to go until you can get on campus, but highly recommend getting onto campus of the colleges that you are interested in. Um, we do have on-campus housing, home to 230 students, um, and another 185 students that could live across the street. Um, our campus is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We never close. Our, our uh, students are able to access the uh, studios 24-7. Um, if you do want to study art and design, make sure you have the facilities to do so. We are considered a full service campus. The studios, lab shops, and galleries we have will allow you to bring anything, any idea that you have in your brain out into real life. So um, just make sure that every uh, campus you're looking at, if you do want to study art and design, has the, has the resources for you to do that and to make whatever you want. We do offer seven majors um, at Otis. 65% of our classes are studio classes, where 35% are the liberal arts and sciences. Um, we do have architecture, landscape, and interiors, fashion design, product design, toy design, communication arts with two areas of emphasis, the graphic design and illustration, digital media, which is game entertainment and motion design, and fine arts, which is painting, photography, and sculpture, new genre. If you would like to minor, you're more than welcome to do so. We have 19 to choose from, um, and you can double minor if you would like to as well. You just can't double major. Um, employment rates, almost 94% of our students were either on their way to grad school or employed. And I really love the fact that, that they are staying in the fields of art and design. Um, if you've gone to school for, for something that you're passionate about, it's nice to know that you can find a job working in the area in which you love. And if you'd like to know where our students are going to work, um, you can go into our programs. Under each individual program, there's a careers tab. Pull up that careers tab and you'll be able to see some additional companies where our students are working. If you would like to apply to Otis, it's pretty straightforward. Um, freshmen will apply th through our website on the Common App and freshmen through our website on our uh, Otis specific app, a personal statement, transcripts of high school and or college, portfolio will be submitted through Slide Room, and we are a test optional school. The portfolio is 10 to 20 images of any work that you're most excited about in any medium that you love working in. Um, however, if your work is mostly lens-based or digital, we would like you to include five works done from other mediums, um, maybe more traditional mediums such as painting or drawing. Observational drawing is always a great thing to add as well. And we now have introduced this structured portfolio. Deadlines and scholarships for Otis. At December 1st is early action, non-binding. You will hear back from us within three weeks if you've been accepted. February 15th is our priority deadline. Um, and financial aid, uh, that FAFSA opens on October 1st, and all students are considered for merit-based scholarships when you apply. 
and 88% of our students do receive some sort of institutional aid. Transfer, if you would like to transfer, just um, contact someone in admissions because we wanna work closely with you. We want you to be able to take the courses that will transfer nicely into Otis if you're thinking of transferring in. So you can always give me a call. Um, we'll be happy to talk to you about transferring. Other than that, we'd love you to stay uh, connected with us virtually. We have so many events happening. You have a portfolio development session that you could take advantage of, um, a transfer um, session that you could also take a look at, that virtual tour that I talked to you about, and you can make one-on-one -on -one appointments with us at any time. We'll be happy to sit down and do portfolio reviews or talk to you about it, the application process. Um, also, if you'd like to chat with one of our students uh, currently, um, go ahead and take a look at our chat feature that is through Unibuddy on our website. You can talk to one of our students and ask them questions, um, as well as um, a form to fill out for a view book as well. So again, I wanna thank you so much for attending today. Um, there's the QR code. If you'd like to receive a view book, you will receive one of these really fun posters that you see here on the screen now that is around the view book. And if you have any questions, here are my contact details. Please don't ever hesitate to reach out. Thank you. I'm ready to go as soon as you um, unshare your screen. Doing that right now. Perfect, thank you. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Denise Sheldon. I'm from Menlo College in Silicon Valley. Um, and we, we, we talked about Santa Clara already, so we are pretty near Santa Clara. We're right next to Stanford University, actually. Um, and we're also next to all of the companies that you see here. So we're about 25 minutes to San Jose or San Francisco, um, about 30 minutes from the beach, two hours from skiing. Um, and we're in a really nice area where we're in the suburbs, but we're adjacent to all the action. Uh, our campus is gorgeous. We're surrounded by oak trees. Um, there's plenty of housing on campus, including a new dorm that is um, being constructed right now. It'll be ready in the fall of 2021. Um, our campus has also been voted the safest campus in all of California. Um, so that's nice. Parents love hearing that. Uh, and there are also apartments right across the street. So there's no requirement to live on campus. If um, you'd like to, there is housing in the area, including literally across the street. And a lot of our students live there and just walk across the street when it's time for class. Uh, Menlo is certainly a place for opportunity and definitely a place for diversity. So 50% of our campus are students of color um, and we're ranked among the top 5% of all US schools for diversity. Uh, we have four out of 10 of our students who come from outside the United States from 29 different countries. Um, and within our country, 26 different states are represented on campus and 10% of those come from Hawaii. So we're like a little home away from home for Hawaiian students, which is fun for um, our community. Um, and our alumni live in 88 different countries across the globe. We have a 13 to 1 student faculty ratio, um, which you know, means small class sizes and one on one attention from professors, staff, um, and just services on campus. Uh, what I, as the, the head women's volleyball coach, um, I, I see every single day uh, the advantage to being on a smaller campus, having that attention. To me, it's just almost impossible to slip through the cracks um, at Menlo. So there's a lot of support there. Um, we are primarily a business school, and I'll talk about all of our um, degree options later, um, but we've had a lot of success um, in, in uh, national competitions. Uh, we actually came in second in the Bloomberg National Trading Competition last year, um, and as a small school, uh, being able to accomplish something like that is pretty cool. Um, as the volleyball coach, I also have to tell you that five of our teams won their conference this past year. Um, including our women's volleyball team and um, our women's wrestling uh, team and uh, our women's wrestling team has actually won three national championships and individual men's wrestlers have also won national championships as well. We're an NAIA school um, and we, we do quite well there. 
Um, so as I mentioned, we're an incredible business school. Um, and we also, because we sort of have a smaller focus, um, we do a couple of things really well. And one is business and the other is psychology. Um, so there are a whole bunch of different topics underneath that business heading. Um, so you can see what those are there. Our newest degree option is business analytics and there aren't a ton of programs um, across the country that are offering that. Um, so that's a, a fun new one that we've added. We're also adding a master's program in psychology in 2021. Um, our internship program is among the best in the country and we've won awards for it. Um, there are more than 500 companies in our network. Um, and I'm sure that our location in Silicon Valley has a lot to do with that. Um, over half of our students receive job offers from the companies they intern for. And even more impressive, I think, is that 90% of our students have a job offer or have been accepted to graduate school by the time they graduate. So very different from my experience in college. Um, you know, you come to college and uh, they set you up in order to get a job when you graduate and start making money right away and start your career. Uh, Menlo is affordable and we work really hard to make it that way. Um, and you know, we're a private school, like a, a lot of the schools that, who are talking today, um, but it's an investment in your future and we wanna do whatever it takes. If someone wants to come to Menlo and we want them to come to Menlo, we wanna you know, make sure that we can figure out how to make that happen. Um, we offer multiple scholarships and grants to defray the cost of attendance. 90% of our students receive financial aid and the average financial aid package is $34,000. Um, so uh, it's as soon as you apply to Menlo and are accepted, um, eligible students actually receive $20,000 right off the bat um, upon admission. So then, um, you know, it's a matter of looking at um, your FAFSA, which, you know, I don't, if you haven't done it yet, um, October 1's coming right around the corner. So if you're filling out your first FAFSA, it's a, certainly an important thing to do. Um, and then that will make you eligible for even more um, scholarships as well. If you're an athlete, um, recruited student athletes, I love what the guy from Santa Clara said, that was cool. Um, those are recruited through the coaches and um, that athletic scholarship is um, given out in that way. So you would wanna contact the coach if you're an athlete. Um, in 2019, Menlo was ranked uh, the top three best colleges in the country for securing a job 10 years post-grad. Um, our alumni are employed at companies like Tesla, Facebook, Deloitte, YouTube, SAP, SurveyMonkey, Stanford, Silicon Valley Community Foundation, LinkedIn, Morgan Stanley, and the list kind of goes on and on. Um, two of the women on my volleyball team who are about to be seniors have already signed contracts with companies and, and you know, are, are making more than me as soon as they graduate. So that's exciting. Um, so on to the application. The application is, is easy and it's free. Um, it's on our website. You can also do it right on your phone. It just takes a couple of minutes. And then what we really need are just your unofficial transcripts. Um, send those over and then we're able to evaluate that and give you an answer fairly quickly. Um, your application fee can be waived if you apply by December 1st. Um, so I'm gonna put my contact information in the box. So if you're interested in applying to Menlo, we can talk about that. Um, and I always tell everyone, don't worry about the essay or a letter of recommendation at first. Go ahead and get your application in and get the process started. And we can get that from you um, later in the process. Um, if you are looking to transfer, uh, there are no minimum units required. All of your credits will transfer and we will provide you with a transfer credit evaluation um, to let you know exactly what you've finished already and what you still need to finish in your years at Menlo. Um, you know, as a, a freshman, we want to get everyone out in four years. As a transfer, we want everyone out in two years. But that being said, if you're um, a transfer, you can transfer at any time um, because there are no minimum units required. So you can transfer after your freshman year, sophomore year, whenever it works for you. Um, and here's my contact information. I'll also put it into the chat box, um, but we are giving tours on campus now um, with masks and social distancing. And um, I will also put in the chat uh, our virtual tour so you can check out the inside of buildings you may not be able to see because of COVID right now. Um, but we'd love to see you on campus. So thanks for the time. All right, so I'm gonna put my screen.
Perfect. Well, everyone, thank you so much for coming and listening to all these wonderful presentations. My name is Joy Rubio. I'm an admission counselor at Fresno Pacific University. I'm also an alum of FPU. I graduated in 2017, so feel free to ask questions about what life is like, you know, being a student as well as also now being able to work at this wonderful institution. Um, so I'll go ahead and, oops, there we go. So Fresno is located in Central California. So, so centrally located, we're just a few hours from the beach, few hours from the mountains. We are closely located to three national parks. Um, I absolutely loved it because you can technically ski to surf in a day. So that was something that was also really amazing. We are the only private school. Um, we are a four year liberal arts private school. So that's something to look forward to. Because we are the only private school in this area, it means that we're able to have a lot of access to so many wonderful students. We also have five regional campuses, one in Bakersfield, one in Visalia, one in Merced, and two in Fresno. So we have our main campus as well as our North Fresno campus. So we have a traditional um, undergraduate population of just a little over a thousand students. In combination with all five regional campuses, we have about 4,200. And so for our traditional undergraduate students, even though it is a small number, it just means that you're going to have that much more of a connection to your professors as well as your classmates. Fresno is the fifth largest city in California and it has been such an honor to be able to see this city grow in the past five to six years and just seeing how small businesses have been able to revitalize this amazing city. So as I mentioned before, we have our incoming classes a little over a thousand students. And so with that, we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. And the small class sizes just really allow for you to have more opportunities and interactions with your professors and classmates. You really will not be just a number to your professors. By the end of your first day, your professor will most likely have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. And by the end of the week, they'll know your name and what you wanna major in. We offer over 100 areas of study, and within that we offer 40 majors, 38 minors. We always say that possible happens here, and it really does. You won't have to sacrifice or compromise any areas of study that you're passionate about. And so your fa the faculty will work very, very closely with you to make sure that it is possible to do that. And if they're not able to help, then they're going to point you into the direction where someone can help you. We do have a, an average GPA of a 3.4 at this university, which I think is absolutely outstanding because it just goes to show that the small class sizes really do pay off. And then 81% of our faculty have the highest degree in their field. So you are going to be getting that firsthand knowledge from the professors. Also at FPU, we don't allow student assistants to teach the classes. So that means you are gonna get that firsthand knowledge from the professor. At Fresno Pacific, um, we do not require you to minor in biblical studies, which sometimes is common at most private institutions. However, for us, we only require you to take two biblical literature classes, one as an incoming freshman or incoming transfer, which is Jesus in the Christian community. And next, you'll have to take an upper division biblical literature class, and you'll have a ton of options to choose from. But those are the only two classes we require of you. At Fresno Pacific, we also have five top majors. So we have psychology, kinesiology, business, communications, and pre-health. And so our, even though we are a smaller sized um, school, our majors are still gonna have that rigor and that little bit of competitiveness with your classmates, but the majors are not impacted. So you don't have to worry about being able to get into a program or having to change your major. We also have three distinctive majors at Fresno Pacific. We have nursing, liberal arts, liberal studies, and software engineering. So with our nursing program, this is new to us within this year. Something unique about it is that with most nursing programs, if you're not able to get in the first time you apply, you will have to change your major. But at Fresno Pacific, you have two options. You're either able to apply for the following year if you don't get in, or you can easily transition to another major such as kinesiology or pre-health. So we do have some other options for you. For liberal arts, our classes are specifically designed to help students pass the CSETs. And currently we are in the process of having those classes count as a CSET waiver. We're just waiting to get that approved. Our software, engin our software engineering major 
You'll be learning from faculty that have worked for Chrysler, Motorola, Microsoft, and other big name engineering companies. Your senior year, you'll be completing a year-long project that you'll be able to turn into a portfolio that you can take to a job, which I think is absolutely incredible because you can say, this is what I learned, here's how I applied it, here's the finished product. So those are our three distinctive majors at Fresno Pacific. We also have a four-year graduation guarantee. So if this is something you're interested in, you don't wanna to have to worry about, will I be able to graduate in four years? I hear it takes five to six. For our incoming freshmen, we have the four-year guarantee. For incoming transfers, we have a two-year guarantee if you come in with, your, um, with an associate. There are some more um, requirements if you go to experiencefpu.com slash guarantee. If you're following all the guidelines, you're listening to your advisor, and for some reason you're not able to finish in four years or two years, the university will completely cover the cost of the extra time that it takes for you to finish if it happens to be our fault. So to me, that's absolutely amazing and super, super incredible. So feel free to take a look at that on our website if you're interested in that. We do have competitive sports teams at Fresno Pacific as well. So we are part of the NCAA Division II, and we are also a part of the PAC West Conference. So we've been able to compete in the Western region of the United States, as far west as Hawaii. If you're at all interested, you can go to fpuathletics.com and fill out a recruit form that, um, for the sport you're interested in, and our coaches will be in contact with you as well. So 98% of our students receive some type of financial aid, which is really outstanding. And if you look at this pie chart, this is how you're able to, many of our students are able to afford Fresno Pacific. So we offer many scholarships from departmental scholarships to athletics to even our academic scholarships. So depending on your GPA, you will get anywhere from about five to 8,000 to full tuition. So make sure you're finishing the year strong so you're able to receive one of our scholarships. So getting started, um, you can apply at our website. There is a $40 application fee. However, if you send me an email, then I will send you a promo code so you can have that waived. We will require unofficial high school transcripts and college transcripts as well. Right now, test scores are optional like many of these colleges, so we're not requiring them. If you have taken it and you'd like to send them in, you're more than welcome to, but it's optional. We have some priority application deadlines, December 1st, March 1st, and then the last day to apply is August 15th. So we do technically have a rolling submission, but the sooner you can fill out the application, the better, so we can get you an offer letter for scholarships. So this is my contact information. We are in the process of um, being able to give tours, on-campus tours again on October 5th, so feel free to reach out to myself so I can set that up for you. We're also working on um, having students be able to sit in on virtual classes. So if you'd like to see what the class size is like, what our professors like, you're more than welcome to, again, contact me and I can set that up for you. We also have a virtual tour option on our website as well. So thank you so much. Feel free to reach out. I'll also put my contact information in the chat. Do we have the representative from Columbia College Hollywood with us? Hmm. I'm hearing a no. So we're gonna to move to Beth from Mount San Jacinto College. Hi everybody, I'm Beth from MSJC. I'll go ahead and um, put my info in the chat there right off the bat. And let's get going here, I'll share my screen. We are a uh, California Community College and uh, really right here uh, located between LA and Palm Desert, but we provide all the academics and vocational and technical programs that satisfy transfer requirements to four-year universities, right? So a lot of students choose to start at MSJC, start at a community college, and then transfer to any university. We partner with all of them, even the private and independent universities. It's the same degree for a lot less tuition. And we have free career exploration and a lot of academic support. Our faculty members are masters in their field and very anxious to see to your success. This picture is a shot of the Menifee site. And, um, but know that we have whoops, four campuses or all the same college. 
And our district really serves students from about the size of the Grand Canyon, really from all up into Banning Beaumont area and that corridor that goes into Palm Desert, you know, down into Fallbrook and Temecula. But you can go at your own pace, your own schedule, attend full or part time. And because of the pandemic, pandemic or that we've switched to fully online classes that are very convenient because it's anytime classes, right? If you're a night owl, you can take classes at night or if you want to take a real time class, we offer those as well. Hey Beth, so um, yeah, I can't see your screen. You cannot see my screen. No, it is a blank screen. That's not good. I put share, so let's see what's going on here. Is that working? Yeah, it looks beautiful. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> All right, well, there's my name again, and there's a picture of the Menifee campus, so buzz through this here. Um, there's a nice YouTube video with a campus, virtual campus tour of our newest site in Temecula. You're looking at a photo of it there off to the right of this page, and so just do a quick YouTube search for MSJC, Temecula Valley Campus. We're excited about that opening in spring of 2021, but know that when we're back on campus, we have four college sites, or, and we'll continue with online classes as well. Of course, that's always been an option. You go at your own pace and your own schedule. Uh, know that students often start at community college, like I said, to transfer, you'll develop those educational plans with our counselors, right, for career uh, exploration and piece together those classes you need to transfer to any university with enhancements to transferring like honors enrichment, um, clubs, athletics, PTK, which is the Honor Society for the two-year community college, first year experience, right, that's going to create a very strong, solid start to your college degree which is the same in the first two years at any university. You're just transferring in now as a junior to any of the universities with their priority registration consideration or you know, priority status now as a junior. By the way, the Temecula site is going to have a beautiful culinary program. The, 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 um, the kitchens there are beautiful professional kitchens with an art studio, STEM labs, and, and more. So explore that tour, and I'll put the link to that in the chat as well. I think you know why college, that's why you're here, but why MSJC? So we're fairly affordable at only $46 per unit for those first two years of your bachelor's degree. You can start with us and then transfer and save some money there, stay close to home. We too have financial aid and many of you will get free tuition with our Promise program and Promise grant. They're both fee waivers. Do your FAFSA as we've been mentioning at all the colleges. Uh, of course, we're fully accredited and you know you do your FAFSA to see if you get our free fee waiver. Uh, we have great job training courses, so some of you need to get to work sooner than later. You get your certificates in order to get to work. We have a full-time job developer and internships as well. Uh, we're very proud of our nursing program where our nursing, nursing school is uh, ranked 11th in the state right now. I'll put on my stethoscope here. I'm not a nurse, but I'll play one in a college fair. And uh, so, you know, those, those jobs are available. You're doing your clinicals at the local hospitals. We have a, a lot of, a ton of student support and uh, only 16 week semesters, you'll be surprised how fast it goes and before you know it, you're off to university. But more importantly, do it for you. Um, to talk a little bit about how we adjusted for the pandemic, of course, we went fully online, but even student life and clubs continue to do virtual events, virtual programming, uh, virtual tours, and virtual visits with anyone in any of our departments at the hub. And that's what I put in the chat, that link to the MSJC virtual campus. So msjc.edu hub, you get free tutoring, which is all virtual right now, which is kind of neat because it's very visual. Our current transfer center does nothing but help you transfer. Students with disabilities get extra help for their coursework. Our veterans are getting extra coursework and priority registration. There's a pathway for foster youth as well. And of course, our Student Health Center, and we have all talked about financial aid. There is money for college at any of these universities and certainly at MSJC. So do your FAFSA. It's now at a website called student or studentaid.gov. And we go out to the high schools and help you. Of course, virtually now we'll help you with that FAFSA as well. But that's a if you get a fee waiver, it's that's a five six hundred dollar bonus every semester, right? So that's about what a full time student would be paying, and you could have that waived if you're eligible. So do your FAFSA. And here's how to get started. It's really three four steps. You apply. It's a free online application at our website, msjc.edu, and you want to do it a couple months before the semester starts, right? So we're seniors. If you're a senior now, you would apply even before you graduate in the spring so that you get every chance to get early registration. And then you get our MSJC, your MSJC ID number rather, e immediately in an email that you provide and an activation code allowing you to set up your college portal where you do everything as a college student, including an online orientation. And then you um, 
set up your college email and log in to see when your registration appointment is, which will probably be, as I say, about a month before the semester starts, and you don't want to miss that. And then you meet with an MSJC counselor for your personalized ed plan. And it's all done from the hub. You, any, of us, any of us can log on right now before you even get those logon credentials and meet with us in our welcome center, our virtual welcome center at the hub. Okay. And when we're back, we're, we'll, we'll co cover wonderful coursework in some various uh, degrees. Really, I'm just touching on the tip of what we offer. We have award-winning programs, our best nurses, police officers, firefighters come out of the community college system, degrees in digital media with, as I say, masters in their field. And uh, keep going, start at MSJC, get a job, and then keep coming back to us at night or on the weekends to continue on and be successful. Um, our Lady Eagles basketball team won their championships a couple years ago. We continue to recruit for athletics. So if you're interested in athletics, absolutely contact me at the outreach inbox email or the coaches and you can see our programs at our website. There's one last thing I want to talk about um, and then uh, we'll take questions if you want or you can email me your questions but students can take college classes while they're in high school through the dual or concurrent enrollment program and it's tuition free so that's another way to get ahead and go tuition free at MSJC. We're a California community college you would need to apply to the college and get pre-approved before the semester starts and then you've graduated high school with some college credit and certainly high school credits as well so uh, email me with your questions about that or I'll meet with you one-on-one -on -one to help you it's just a pre-approval process and that's a neat way to go to and get ahead. Uh, wanted to keep it quick and easy, and um, I encourage you to explore MSGC. I appreciate this time. There's my email address as well. And uh, when we get back in person, we'll be out of your high schools and get back to doing in-person college tours. So visit us on social media. We love it, and I'm so happy that you are with us today. Thank you so much. All right, I think that's the last of the colleges that are presenting today. Um, my name is Elizabeth. I'll be doing the Q&A portion. So if anybody has any questions, go ahead and post it to that Q&A uh, tab and I'll read them out for the colleges. Please make sure to address them to specific colleges or if you have a um, overall question, put that in there, okay? Uh, first question is for Point Loma. I know it was already answered, but just in case somebody else has the same question, it's how is the application process at Point Loma different for the nursing program? Yeah, so for the most part, if you're applying as a first time freshman, so someone out of high school applying directly to Point Loma, there's no different application. You're not applying to the nursing program itself. You're applying to the pre-nursing program. So it's all the same application. Um, this year, I don't think we're accepting transfer students, so there's no application for transfers directly into uh, nursing. So. Alrighty, second question is actually from Gina. It's for Mount San Jacinto College. It's when is the Temecula campus actually scheduled to open? Spring 2021. You know, we were um, aiming for fall, but then the pandemic happened and um, we kind of slowed things down just to make sure we got it right. It's it's a gorgeous campus. I will get the link and put it in the chat so everyone can go take the, I wanted to not show it here in the interest of time, but it's a two minute video that shows you everything that's available, but all student services will be there. Libraries, counseling, financial aid, um, free tutoring, of course, at the Learning Resource Center, uh, but spring 2021. So we're looking at probably April, March or April. Thank you for asking. Alrighty. Second question for Mount San Jacinto is, if I'm already enrolled in dual enrollment class, how different is the application enrollment process once I graduate high school and apply to MSJC? Great college? question. Yeah, so I'm glad if that's the case that you're taking classes at MSJC now, you will keep the same ID number for us. Uh, you're a continuing student. I would encourage you to 
check in with enrollment at the hub if it's virtual if that's when by then we may not be virtual or just reapply the college when it allows you to select fall of the senior year that you're going to attend that way it updates our database knows you're a new student and you get earlier registration because high school students get the last registration dates so it would behoove you to just reapply as a senior or graduate of high school or ask enrollment to update your database our database and you can keep going at, a, at MSJC. Now you've gained some credits right in college and you don't have to take those classes again and it's been tuition free. So that's really the only follow up uh, that you'd have to do. You keep the same login ID number and credentials and um, you're ahead of the game because you know how to check in. Thank you. All right, you've got another one. It's can you give a bit more detail on transferring to UC or Cal State school? Are there GPA requirements, percentage, or acceptance? Okay, so to go to MSJC, we do not require a GPA or a SAT scores. Certainly bring those if you want for placement in math and English, but you're going to self-report on an online application as to what math and English class to be in. Um, or we'll accept your AP scores and that sort of thing for placement in math and English. But to transfer, you meet with a counselor for an ed plan that we call the IGETC, which covers everybody, the Cal State and private and independent universities. We partner with all of them, and they typically accept your credits that you'll complete at MSJC at only $46 per unit. And it's usually about 60, 60. So instead of 60 units to transferring, um, some universities will take more or less, right? So depending on your major, but many of those are guaranteed and we have um, partnerships with like Cal State San Marcos for a guaranteed admission for business or with other Cal States and UCs, by the way, we call them tag agreements, which um, cover very impacted and uh, popular majors so that you're guaranteed a spot in those classes. When you apply, you're a junior, you're done with doing your prereqs and general ed at MSJC and you're transferring in to those universities to finish up. So no, the no SAT scores, you start at MSJC instead, prove yourself here with us and then transfer out to any of these fine universities that came here today. Thank you. Alrighty, next question is for Fresno Pacific. It's how would you describe your college's student body? So our student body, um, and I didn't get to mention this earlier, but so our student body, it's 47% um, um, Latinx and so Living in the Central Valley, I think it does, our student body does a really great job of showing um, who represents the Central Valley. And so you're going to have so much diversity. There's so much inclusiveness. Um, students are not just going to be your roommates. They're going to become your family. They're going to become classmates, roommates. And honestly, it's just going to become a family. And so you have to try, I always tell students, you have to try very, very hard not to make friends because even after your first day in class, like you're gonna come out with like at least one person that you know or one person that's gonna be in at least two or three of your classes. So um, everyone is incredibly friendly. I think for me, I found it odd because even if I didn't know someone as I'm walking by, they'd say, oh, hey, how's it going? And so, but I wouldn't know them. And so everyone is very friendly, very inviting. And so, um, like I said, we're, it's all about relationships at Fresno Pacific with faculty and students. Alrighty, next one is for Menlo. It's what additional academic services are offered to students at your school, such as tutoring, career counseling, or study skills? Oh, sure. Um, you said tutoring. Can you repeat the list again? Tutoring, uh, career counseling, or study and study skills. So all of those. Um, so we have, um, I, I guess I'll take it one at a time. Um, there's tutoring available on campus from um, our professors, but also peer tutoring as well, which um, a lot of students are involved in. Um, Career-wise, so I didn't mention that our internships for business majors are mandatory. So um, there's a lot that goes along with um, the internship program, and that includes um, going over your resume and helping to build that. Um, you know, obviously helping to get that internship. And then on the, on the other side of it, um, going, after going through that internship program, then it's career placement is, comes right after that. So all of that is kind of built into those um, services for the students. And in terms of like academic support, um, there is a, a math and an English center that I find um, 
just incredible. Like for the English um, and uh, writing center, you can take your paper in to be reviewed and um, like a draft to be reviewed and, and to go over and they, they help you to um, craft your, um, your essays and your papers. Um, so there's uh, a lot of student support in, in all areas. And I, I'll, um, I'll put a, um, a link in the chat also with that information on our website as well. I hope I answered that question. You did. Um, next question is for Sokka University. What types of extracurricular activities are there on campus? Good question. We have um, student clubs, recreation, all of that. Our students are very um, oriented towards social justice just because again, our mission is to live contributive lives. And so we have alternative spring break. Um, we also have a full range of diversity and inclusion initiatives, everything from getting involved in student government um, from year one. It's extremely student driven. Um, Soka small. We're, we're also less than 20 years old, so we're very much in the foundational of who we're going to be, who we want to be in this world. And so students have started, you know, at BSU to really partner with our local Black Lives Matter movement and how to support them through hands-on organizing grassroots um, in nations, right? Like, I want to represent my nation of Zimbabwe, partnering with the U.S. movement. How can we do that? Which is pretty cool. And um, our students are also uh, very oriented towards like Model UN. Um, they compete in international competitions and in doing all of that. Okay, um, next question is for Whittier. Do most students live on or off campus? So we are primarily a residential campus. Um, so majority of our students do live on campus. However, um, the population that we do have as a commuter students are strong. Um, even so, if you are a commuter, we have resources, we have on-campus lockers for you, um, we have meal plan options, and we also uh, offer mailboxes for our commuter students as well. Um, however, if you do want to live on campus and bring your car to campus, um, that is completely free. And so, depending on which suits your needs, um, there definitely is um, options for you. Um, so, I hope that answered the question. Alrighty, for Santa Clara University, um, what do students like most about your school? A whole lot of stuff. Uh, it, there's, there's no one answer I can give to that. Um, you know, I, and honestly, if I could give one answer to that, it'd probably be a pretty boring place to be, right? And so uh, we get students who are interested in all types of things. I mean, I think, again, that's kind of what I was hitting at in terms of being where we are uh, and, and, and the, the vibrancy, the vibe of the campus. I mean, um, you know, as, as, as uh, Menlo College was, was talking, we're in a great location. So you can literally get to anything off campus uh, within a couple of minutes, but on campus, it's a very, very vibrant, uh, very engaged uh, student body. We're very residential. Most folks live on campus the first couple of years. And then the surrounding area is basically a neighborhood. So even the folks who live off campus live, you know, within walking distance. But we do have some community students, but uh, definitely primarily a, a, a residential campus. So there's a lot that goes on. Alrighty, and for Otis College of Arts, um, what makes your college unique? You're still muted, ma'am. Yep, yep, let me unmute. Um, what makes our college unique? Well, the fact that we have been um, around for over 100 years, that's pretty unique. I love um, the fact that we've, that we've had longevity for that amount of time and continue to grow. Um, the other thing is all, art design is all we do. So if you want to immerse yourself in art and design and just geek out every day in something that you love um, and talk to other students that um, you can cross pollinate ideas with and that are interested in exactly the same thing you are, you're surrounded in that environment. Um, I love that too. The other thing that makes us unique is our community. We're a very tight, close knit community. I can, I'm a graduate from Otis as well. Um, I can call anybody. I could call an alum anywhere and they will always take my call. And I love that. I love our community. All right. Um, same question to Fresno. What makes your college unique? I think what makes our college unique is truthfully the faculty and just the experiences that you're able to get from just being within Fresno City itself um, because of its location. There's so many opportunities and we've had a lot of professors that have been able to have 
amazing experiences. Like if you're interested in accounting, we've had accounting professors work for the big four. And so our students are, they are assigned internships with these companies. And so um, to me, it's, you're not just going to get an education, you're going to get the mentorship, you're going to get the friendships with professors. Even for myself, I'm still in touch with many professors and they've helped me throughout grad school. And, you know, I think for me, it's just the faculty are going to do everything possible that to make it possible for you to attend and then also have opportunities beyond college. All right, um, for Santa Clara University, what does a typical day look like for a student at your school? Uh, okay, so just generally speaking, and I think for, you know, for most schools, you can probably say that uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes usually are your shorter, you know, the classes are about 45 minutes to an hour. Tuesdays and Thursdays can sort of be your, your, your chunks of time, right? So class would be hour and a half. You might have a, like a three or four hour lab on one of those days. And so, you know, college operates differently from high school. High school, most high schools, you got six sessions or seven sessions in a day. College, you're gonna have, see if this math works out for you, more free time, more work, um, and you know, more, more, more freedom than you've ever had, right? And so it's really about time management. Um, you know, for us being on the quarter system, you know, again, so big picture, in general, generally speaking, four classes will make you a full-time college student. In the semester environment, you take about eight classes in the academic year on the quarter system in the same amount of time, but on a quicker timetable, you take at least 12 classes. So things move very fast at Santa Clara and schools like that. Um, and so it really is about time management. But again, I think it really is about balance and our students work hard, they play hard as well. You know, and I think our, our retention rate for your graduates kind of speak to the fact that folks find balance, you know, so yeah. So right now I'm gonna ask for any final questions from attendees. Uh, if you have any questions, please put those in the Q&A box. And we have one that just came in. So um, anonymous attendee, actually I'll just ask this to all the panelists. So what would you say are the strongest pros and cons about the class environments? Yeah, and whoever wants to start can. Um, well, I'll just quickly say at MSJC, um, many of those professors are PhDs in their field, but they're at the community college because they love students. They're done writing grants or, or um, you know, working at the universities and they, they want to get, you know, in there with the new students that are new to college. So that's impressive. Um, but in the classroom environment, you know, the first day of class will be like 40, 50 students and then they kind of trickle out and they add and drop classes all the time for all kinds of reasons, not good or bad. It's just people are dust is settling and people are settling into their schedules. And so they could be as low as 20, 30 students. So you have a very accessible ability to your professors uh, for that reason, but also because they are sometimes your tutors in the tutoring center. There's faculty and peer tutoring, but they're very open to meeting with you in office hours um, so that they, they want to see to your success and I and they just love working with students so it's a, a very fun environment in that respect you feel noticed you know I always recommend students sit in the front row to get all the info and network with your other students because they hear about job opportunities and all kinds of other opportunities at college and activities that are going on on our campus thanks yeah, and I'll, I'll jump in next just to again sort of generally speaking because I you know when these are in person and you know we're sitting in a room with students and parents I really kind of like to demystify this but what I'll say and what I was talking speaking to initially was that you know universities really fall into one of three categories for me smaller you know traditional liberal arts colleges you got your medium-sized schools and you got your big schools right and when we say big schools when you're talking about campuses in that 20 30 40 50 on up thousands you know of students range your first couple of years, you're talking about class sizes that are lecture halls. You're talking about, on average, about 300, 400, 450. I have heard of in-person classes of 1,800, right? And so you sit in a big lecture, usually the person in front of the room is a TA, meaning they're a graduate student, right, Just presenting that material. And so if you are a good student, you can pay attention, take good notes, go to your room and study those and come back and ace a test, you'll do fine in that academic environment. I think most of the schools on this panel are medium-sized or smaller institutions. The benefit of going to smaller institutions is again, that access to the, your advisors, your professors, things like that. That said, it comes at a cost because private education, you know, it, it, it's expensive. Only 20% of all students in, the coll in, in, in college in general 
in the country attend private schools. And this is a big part of that. So um, again, to me, that dollar difference represents access. And uh, at Santa Clara, we do well, just like all the other institutions. But um, you know, that's the difference, right? Is that at a, at a medium size or a smaller school, you should have access getting to your teacher, your professor. You should not run into impacted majors and things like that. And so that's kind of a big difference. Yeah, I would like to piggyback on that a little bit. Um, I agree with with um, what AJ had to say. Um, we, you know, art design schools do tend to be on the smaller side. We are, you know, around 1100 undergrad. We would be considered a small school. That larger school um, environment is works well for some. My son loved it. Cal Poly, 25,000. You know, and that's fine. Was fine for him. But not everybody will thrive in the same environment. And I think that's what you need to you need to start thinking about for yourself. Everybody's a little bit different. And so just, just getting to those schools, checking out the vibe. Um, some people will thrive more in a, in a smaller environment. So um, we are about six to one student faculty ratio. So your, uh, your um, teachers and your faculty will get to know you very well. Um, and that's something you can always count on. You can rely on them and they're super accessible. Um, as far as a con, that's so funny, I was trying to think, well, what's a con? I mean, I went to Otis and I was trying to think, well, what would have been a con as a student? Um, I guess we don't have sports. That's one thing we don't have. So if you are a student that does want sports, um, we don't, you know, you're creating so much in your daily life that you don't have time to devote that amount of time to the sports that, um, that it, that's required of you. So I guess that would be a con if I had to, if I had to pick one at all. Thanks. I, I was just going to talk, no one actually asked me like what makes Menlo unique, but it kind of goes along with what we've been talking about anyway, is, and it's the community. And I think that's probably the case at a lot of our schools. Um, so everything you guys just said, I absolutely agree with, except we're the opposite of Otis. So we have a lot of athletes at our school and it's a big part of our campus. And part of that community, like I know so many of our professors because they come to our matches and they sit there and cheer and then they talk about the matches in class to our athletes, which I just think is like such a special experience to have that type of relationship with the people who are educating you and, you know, they live and work, um, you know, in the community around us. So I think that's really special. Yeah, and I'll add one more thing. Um, regardless, it's up to you as a student to make sure that it's a good experience because if you don't show up to class, like your professors, it's, they'll have hurt feelings, whatever, but it's you who's losing out on the education. Um, and you're paying in college, you know, even if, even with great financially, even with $46 a unit, you're still paying. And that's not been the case for most of you um, at the, you know, at high school level. And so it's, it's an investment into yourself to show up to class, to be prepared. Um, one of, you know, sometimes it's great to ask, we break it down for our students. If you miss a class, this is how much money you forfeit. And you know, uh, for us it's a semester or a quarter. And so it is up to you to pay attention and to voice your opinion to your professors and be like, I would really like to learn about this. Most of them are so excited when you're excited about something. And so they'll bring in articles or a documentary to screen about that. But if you don't take the initiative to ask your teachers for help or for you know input in the class, then kind of on you, regardless of what um, size institution. Yeah, and sorry if I'm going to interrupt any of the panelists, but I think that's a perfect spot to end on. Um, if there's any other questions from attendees, please reach out to all of our panelists here. They're more than happy to talk to you, email with you. I'm sure they would probably Zoom with you. <laughs> um, thank you all for attending. Thank you, panelists, for being here. It's been great to learn about all of your schools. Um, I've learned so much about each of your schools personally. Uh, it makes me really happy just to hear your passion about your schools. And I think it really came through and I'm sure attendees can attest to that. Uh, with that being said, thank you all. And you're all free to go and go about your day. Everyone have a great day. Thank you, you all. Everyone. Have a great weekend. Yes, you all as well. Bye. Thanks for coming everyone.